TFL rail trains, very nice indeed. Really impressive train there. <laughs> and that's one of the old ones on the other side. So I've come out to Harold Wood, which I think must have some association with King Harold, I think, the last Saxon King of England. It's quite heavily associated with parts of East London, Leighton for example. And today I'm going to go looking for a Druid enclosure on Knavestock Common. Wow, why would you not want to go looking for a Druid enclosure? It was one that was identified as such by the Druid, William Stukeley, in the 18th century. And uh, the last reports I read of there being some sort of visible enclosure, mounds, uh, from the early 90s, so it'll be interesting to see if I can find anything at all. I don't really know where it is. I have a large area to search. All my maps <laughs> are quite old. I don't really have a particularly detailed map, and they're all, you know, a good uh, 30, 40 years old. They'll predate the M25. We're right on the edge of London here today. The border of Greater London cuts through uh, possibly later sections of this walk. So. I think uh, Harold Wood, Harold Hill is a classic bit of post-war development, Homes for Heroes development on the fields in the east of London. Here we have one of the little streams that trickles down from the high ground. I'm not sure which one this is, is that the Ingerborn or the Carter's Brook? Possibly a different one. I'll put the name on the screen. Central Park. There you go. How many Central Parks are there in London? Quite a lot, I think. This is great, isn't it? So I think uh, here, this is Harold Hill. Amazing weather we got today. It's the 29th of September. We really are in autumn proper. It's such a beautiful warm day. It's sort of a, nearly 20 degrees today. 18, 19 degrees. Perfect. And you know, this could be the last one of the year. The last nice day. Makes it even more kind of special. So this is my map I'm using today. Look, and you can see how old it is. Look, it's got the price in old money, seven and six. It's the nine sheet master map of Greater London, northeast section. And actually, um, the best map I found of today's walk was in my master atlas of Greater London, but it's too big to bring out really. So it was handy to have this. We're here, Harold Hill, Central Park. We're gonna go, hopefully, I'm gonna find my way across Dagenham Park, which looks really nice. And then to Noak Hill and the, uh, the Stukeley Druid enclosure was, uh, on Knavestock Common, which you can see is up here. Here's Knavestock Common here. So we're here. It's going to go up to here. However, in the description I found from the 90s, they talk about being on the western end of Moors Wood. And this, this here is called the Moors. But this is uh, South Weald Common. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense. We'll have to work. So this is one of the things we're going to have to work out today. So we'll go for a wander around Navestock Common, which will be nice anyway. And then we'll work our way over here maybe, if we can. It's a very good chance I'm going to get lost. It's not to do with the map, it's to do with my terrible sense of direction. The Manor. Dagenham Park Nature Reserve. I think Dagenham Park is a nice example of the grounds of a once stately home. Maybe some of that here. I think there's a moat here as well, actually. I should say, the initial idea for this walk did come from a comment. And someone talked about uh, earthworks at Knavestock that were marked on 
Some maps were not others. I think it'll come out on the camera. There's a curved ditch here, goes around there. Could just be the uh, a dried up stream bed, which is most likely what it is. There's a pipe there, uh, which I would say indicates that it was a stream. Dried up stream bed. What a lovely bit of woodland here in Dagnam Park. Here we have, look, another dried up stream bed. Well, it actually could be the same stream. Cutting through the bottom of the wood. So beautiful and calm and peaceful in here. And at the end of that stream is this little pond here, covered in green algae. I wonder if this is a spring, or whether it was part of the, uh, the landscaping of the gardens, of the grand house that was here. This is a kind of magical landscape, isn't it? This large green pool with a tree growing out of the middle, and then the high bank at the far side there, and the cutting the stream running away winding his way down through the wood. It's a place that must have legends attached to it. Although these tracks of woodland, old ancient forest get tamed by suburbia and then they just become a little feature in the built environment, kind of branded nature reserve, they still have their legends and their myths great forests still do. And they kind of get subsumed into the urban world, but the magic is still here. There's still magic in these woods. I can feel it. beautiful isn't it? And that high woody ground over there, I guess that must be Weald Country Park. Feels a bit like the London Borough Havering goes under the radar a bit doesn't it? But I think it's quite unusual in the sense that I think it has a very large percentage of its area is open space and this I think is one of the biggest. Dagdon Park. There's a clump of trees here on a slightly raised area. Bearing in mind this was the grounds of, is it called Dagnum Park? A big house. This has a kind of artificial look to it, doesn't it? This is a place where Drinkers evidently come. There's some graffiti on a tree on the far side. It's interesting, isn't it, how people find these spots? I mean, that's the kind of thing I'll be looking for on Navestock Common. That'd be perfect. A raised mound flanked by oak trees. It's difficult to get more druidic than that. I have a feeling I might not be that lucky. This really has to be one of the most beautiful open spaces in London. It's absolutely idyllic. And there's nobody around at this part. Once you move away from the car park, there's no people. It's me and the squirrels and the deer and the birds and the trees. It's 
So this footpath here through the edge of a little strip of woodland, I think, or I hope, is going to take me up to Noak Hill. Another place I've never really been to before. I'm intrigued to see what's here, right on the edge of London, right on the eastern edge of London. It's really beautiful so far. I thought these looked like uh, lumps of concrete, but look, you can see they're completely cylindrical. I thought it was a pipe, but look, they're solid. It looks like they could have been a stone column. Look, you can sh see the shape here. What was once a stone column? Look, a bit there in the round, in the rough here in the edge of the woodland. I wonder if this was maybe one of the entrances to the park, to Dagnum's Park. Perhaps a like gate posts, very grand gate posts. Look, okay, there's more here. A stone, like a stone plinth. The most easterly point in Greater London is somewhere down that road, a bit further down there. But I'm going to go up Church Road here, which takes me to Navestock Common, and towards the end of this road, we also pass out of the border of Greater London. Noak Hill Victory Hall. It's like a beguiling little building, isn't it? And literally across the road from the Noak Hill Victory Hall is the Radha Krishna Temple. So this is St Thomas's Church. Noak Hill, Romford, Essex. Interesting looking spire, isn't it? That horse, that horse just did a really loud neigh at me then. I don't know, I don't know what you want, fella. I just can't get over the weather today. It's absolutely beautiful. 17 degrees, it's like summer. It's really hot and beautiful. It's gorgeous sun. It's so, such a treat. Such a bonus. This is a perfect place to be. I've been kind of city bound for about a month now actually. So it's wonderful to get out onto the edge of London. Although I'm walking down a road, it's a country road, right? In Greater London. Country lane in Greater London. Romford countryside. You've got Church Road there, London Borough of Havering. And then over here, you've got Goatswood Lane. And I think this is the point where you leave Greater London. And I think here, looking at the boundary between Greater London and Essex, could be wrong. And now up here, there's nowhere to walk. It's just a high bank on one side, which is always a bit troubling. This lane for ages, but I think this is Navestock Common at the end of this lane now. So, Navestock Common kind of goes either side of this road here. We're looking at the old maps. This is a problem with not having an up to date map, I guess. Um, and there's no indication really where it where the Stukeley camp is, other than actually it being on a different common. So I think what I'm going to do is find the first, I think I'm going to take the footpath to the right, which is actually heading back the way I've walked a little bit, because I think that's more likely. I think the thing that slightly caught me out, aside of course from my um, poor map reading, is that you expect a common to be exactly that, a common, an open space where you can wander around. Usually it is. The other week we were down on Woolwich Common, on Eltham Common, and from looking at the map, I thought it was going to be like that, so I thought I could wander around. But actually, it's not the case. I mean, that looks very tempting to go that way. It does indeed, but... And I could just then walk over the countryside there towards Navestock itself, and back again. I think after coming out here now, I've walked for about two hours to get here. I think I'm going to try and at least find something. 
I was just looking at this bit of rough ground here. Look at that path I just pointed out. I'm thinking this looks like the kind of common land I would expect. I saw that. There's that clump of trees over there. That looks intriguing. And then I just spotted. I don't know if you can see already in the footage. There's something in this on this bit of rough ground by the road, which is a bit incongruous. I have to go and check it out. Look. Can you see? There's a stone obelisk there. Now, my slight explanation is it's probably a trick point. Nothing uh, mysterious, but let's go and have a look, shall we? I mean, I don't want to set unrealistic expectations. It's almost certainly a trick point. But it... <laughs> It's all I've got at the moment. Let's go and check it out, come on. Let's confirm what we think. To be honest with you, I find trig points, mystical things. And here it is, a trig point on Navestock Common. I wish I knew what those numbers meant. There's numbers and there's letters. Great though, if the trick boy just happened to be near Stukeley's enclosure, because it's that clump of trees behind which caught my eye. And uh, one of the descriptions I read is a, is a mound surrounded by brambles and rough ground, basically. Maybe I can have a look. The deer running across there into that tree, they've just run behind that tree. What this is, I think, is a pond. So the pond would rule out this area as the location because they would have noted the pond. It's a fantastic little spot though, right in the sun. So this is the public footpath which cuts across a golf course which kind of buggers up the search for the, uh, the Druid enclosure in a way. It's got a golf course built all over it which has been landscaped with mounds and bumps. Well, I think the chances of finding Stukeley's Druid enclosure are incredibly remote. To be honest with you, they always were. And the other point is, is you know, probably wasn't a Druid enclosure. But it was something. There was other later, more rational people suggest it was a Motton Bailey castle, perhaps. What we can say is this is the landscape of Stukeley's Druid enclosure. This is what he saw as being an ancient, storied landscape imbued with a kind of mysticism. It's still an incredibly beguiling terrain, isn't it? Even with the M25 carving its way through. When you go looking for earthworks, suddenly everything becomes an earthwork. Every ditch and every little hillock and mound and hump. And I've sort of become struck by that great big mound there sticking up beside the M25. The most uh, logical explanation for that is that it could be to do with the, uh, the workings, the M25 workings, the soil displaced and heaped up beside the road there. So I'm actually here now on that mound or one of them and uh, there is a footpath actually that runs up the side of the golf course next to the M25 so I'm going to follow that now, back up uh, to the road, the little lane that I turned off onto the golf course. So I've done a big, a big U, really. And then I'm going to head towards the other place where I think it might be a little bit more easily identified geographically speaking. But here, look, clearly looks like workings from the road, doesn't it? I think what this highlights, though, is how many prehistoric earthworks and landmarks were flattened out by agriculture and by development, particularly by agriculture. If you think some of the sort of uh, field systems that even exist today were, were laid out in the Bronze Age, you know, how much has been lost beneath the plough.
really impressive bit of landscaping here on the golf course. I think it's called Priory Green Golf Course, isn't that? Or the Priors Golf Course. So this is the footpath that takes me back to Horseman Side. I'm grandmother's maiden name, Horseman. Great uh, Wickham Wanderers player, Tony Horseman, relative of mine. Held the goal scoring record at Wickham until uh, Steve Claridge came and took it away from him. So it's a footpath that goes right beside the M25. Look at this. It's this quite a dramatic landscape to be traversing. This is the kind of mythical landscape I came in search of. Not created by the Druids, but created by the road engineers that built the M25. Amazing, isn't it? It's been so unexpected, so dramatic. This is what I've been really pining for the last couple of weeks, and uh, it's delivered in spades today. It's been absolutely amazing. You never really know what to expect. Like I say, I expected Navestock Common to be a great big open space uh, that I could wander around looking for mounds and ditches but of course it hasn't been like that the reality is something different but that's the that's the amazing thing about these walks you never really know what to expect i mean harold hill and dagnam park fantastic together so I keep going for a little bit longer because there's a wood up here called moore's wood and the um the report i read from the early 90s references something around the western edge of that wood, or the west side. But that is South Weald Common, not Navestock Common, so... But I might as well go over there, see what I can find. So this is an interesting obstacle course they've created along the footpath here. A load of, I don't know, a load of rubbish and a mound of tyres. I don't know what's going on here. This is apparently a public footpath, so... This is disgraceful, really, because that's not actually passable. That would be really dangerous for me to try and get over that. So I don't know what they're doing putting that in a public footpath. That's outrageous. Now I've got to go all the way back, right down the other end of this golf course, to the lane and go along the lane and then try and find a footpath that comes back. That's uh, it's really bad behaviour. I, don't know, I guess they've done it for a reason, but it's outrageous, really. If you close the footpath, you've got to let people know. Anyway, the joy of rambling around the uh, edge of London. It's not uncommon, this kind of thing, I have to say. Negated footpaths are a real feature of the eastern edge of London, particularly. So, I think I'm going to go in a different direction now, actually. In fact, the opposite direction. I'll explain my reasoning. As I was uh, sat out on the lane there, <laughs> examining my options, feeling a bit defeated actually, having to go right the way back after having that blocked footpath. This lovely fellow stopped in his car and he said, are you, are you a bit lost? And he said, what you got to do actually stay on the golf course. And then there's, a, there's, a, there's access to a footbridge over the M25. If you go back onto the golf course, walk up the edge of the golf course, and then uh, you can carry on. And uh, you know what, I just thought, oh, I, could, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Having gone back on myself once, I can't go back on myself again and then potentially maybe not find it. So, and then you start to think, well, I've only got a couple of hours left. I saw this footpath earlier, so I think I'm going to take this footpath. It looks really beguiling. It's across terrain that I've not covered before. And consider this part one of the of the earthwork adventure, because there are settlements over there at North Weald, ancient settlements, I'm good to read a bit about that and then go searching for them on another day. And for today, I'm gonna explore this terrain here and head back towards Harold Wood. So we got this. I suppose this was an attempt to create a dry 
path across the, the field perhaps. There's quite a few streams that run through here. And then we go down there, it's going to be fairly overgrown. It's slightly hostile around here I think, some of the, some of the landscaping anyway. But isn't this beautiful? So this is Noak Hill, I think this is Noak Hill Common. It's glorious and this is, I think, the boundary of Greater London does cut through the top end of this field. This is glorious. Totally vindicates the decision to come this way rather than head back on myself. This is lovely. I would have missed this out otherwise. I'm going to leave this glorious field and come out to, I think it's called Cummings Hall Lane. And that takes us down to Noak Hill Road, which is close to um, Central Park, where I started earlier on today. And then we're down to Harold Wood. So it's been an interesting loop in the end. Really beautiful terrain. Thanks for coming with me. It's been such a fantastic walk. It's been so therapeutic. We may not have found Stukla's Druid enclosure. Who knows, we may have done without realising it. But what we did find is we found the landscape that inspired Stukli to make the claim that this kind of mounds that he saw and ditches were a Druid enclosure. This land here is the land of the Druids out in the London borough of Havering, just north of Romford, right on the eastern edge of London. You've been great company. Thanks so much for coming with me. And I'll see you on the next walk, wherever that may be.